Hello students. Good morning. Hope you and your family are fine and safe at home. I am your Sean Sriman. I will be teaching class 4 social studies. In my earlier video, we have started with the chapter past and its sources. This chapter is in your unit test. I have explained to you what is history, the need to study history and the different periods of Indian history that is the ancient period, medieval period and the modern period. Today we will do the rest of the chapter that is the sources of history divided into two parts the literary sources and the archaeological sources and the need to preserve the sources of history. But before starting with the chapter, let me tell you that today's video is connected to the lesson plan of 28th of August which you will be able to view on your video gallery of the school website after 48 hours. Now, let us start with the chapter. Open to page number 9, the sources of history. The sources of history is divided into two parts. The literary sources and the archaeological sources. Now, under the literary sources, there are religious literature, secular literature and accounts of foreign travellers. And under the archaeological sources, there are monuments, inscriptions and coins. First, we will do about the religious literature. These religious literatures are literature that deals with the religious writings. For example, the Vedas, the Upanishads, the epics like the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the Puranas and also the religious writings of the Jains and Buddhists like the Tripitakas and the Jatakas. They deal with the religious beliefs, social systems, customs and traditions of the earlier people. Next we come to secular literature. Secular literature means literature that is not religious. They deal with the political as well as the, the administration of that time. For example, the, like the Dharma Sutras, the Smritis, then uh, Kautilya's Atrasastra, then Panini Patanjali wrote about Sanskrit grammar which also deals about the political events of those times. The famous writings of Kalidas, uh, Vishakavadatta, which however deals with the people and society and about the religious beliefs of the people, about the economic, social economic uh, times and of ill olden days. Next we come to accounts of foreigners. These, for we have seen that from ancient uh, India, people, foreigners have been visiting India and have left valuable accounts of their writings and visits. These, uh, some of them are the Greek ambassador Megasthenes who stayed in the court of Chandragupta Maurya and wrote his famous work known as Indica. Then there is Fahin who gives us valuable accounts of the Gupta Empire. Say a third is the but human son who left a valuable accounts of the rule of Harshavardhana. So these literary sources is divided into religious literature, secular literature, accounts of foreigners. Next we come on to archaeological sources. Under archaeological sources there are monuments, inscriptions and coins. Now archaeological sources are sources that deals with uh, ex uh, excavations and explorations and archaeological sources deals with the ancient ruins and remains um, and monuments that are recovered as a result of exploration and excavations. Archaeology is the science and method to explore and understand the ancient ruins and remains. Archaeological sources is divided into Three monuments, inscriptions and coins. What are monuments? Monuments are of historical importance. They are buildings and structures that are of historical importance. There are various types of monuments like the temples, the caves, the stupas. 
For example, Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal gives us information about the Mughal period. Kutub Minar. Kutub Minar, however, gives us valuable information about the Delhi Sultanate. Next, we come to inscriptions. Inscriptions. What are inscriptions? Inscriptions are the writings that are engraved on a stone surface or a metal. The study of inscription is known as epigraphy. Now, the inscriptions gives us valuable information about the dates and events, the kings and queens and about the religious and cultural practices of those times. For example, the earliest inscription we find in the Harappan Sills, which is a, gives us information about the Indus Valley Civilization. The most important inscription is the Ashokan Pillar inscription. The Ashokan Pillar inscription gives us the uh, um, religious beliefs and administration of that time. The Alavad Pillar inscription also gives us valuable information about the religious matters of Sam Samudra Gupta's rule. Next we come to coins. What are coins? Coins are another source of historical importance. The study of coins is known as numismatics. Now, coins gives us valuable information and the dates and names of great rulers and kings. They give us valuable information about the Gupta Empire, which shows the, uh, the valuable coins such as the gold coins of the Gupta Empire gives us uh, information about the economic prosperity of the Gupta uh, of the Gupta rulers or the Gupta dynasty. Con, uh, coins also refer, uh, reflect about the economic life of the ancient people and they talk about the trade and commerce activity of those times. In some coins, we also see the figures of humans and deities. These talk about the religious belief of those times. Thus, we do that the sources of history are valuable storehouses of information. In India, there are two organizations that, however, work to preserve these sources of history. Since the sources of history are valuable informations, therefore we must preserve these sources of history. The two organizations are the National Archives of India and the Archaeological Survey of India. These organizations are, uh, in their work, they are assisted by two kinds of people, the historians and the archaeologists. Now, we must know who are historians and who are archaeologists. A historian is a person who studies and writes about the past. He, however, uh, uh, uses the sources of history to find out about the past. An archaeologist deals with the fieldwork that includes digging and restoring artifacts, human facts, objects from ancient ruins, etc. So, a historian studies History through documented evidences and archaeologist studies history through physical remains. A historian studies history and an archaeologist studies archaeology. Historians study about, about the history and about the sources of history. And archaeologist engages itself in the field work to study about the past. Thus, these are the two people who... However, assist these organizations in preserving the sources of history. So, now we have completed the chapter. You will go through the chapter and learn the chapter and do the worksheet in your SST1 exercise book. But before doing the worksheet, go through the video once more and get a clear understanding of the whole chapter. Next day, we will do another chapter. But before, start, uh, before doing another chapter, let me tell you that this chapter is, here, is for your unit test. So you will go through the chapter very well. Now, well, stay safe and fine at home. Always use a hand sanitizer and mask at home. Stay fit and healthy. Goodbye and thank you.